Hey, Master Gardeners. I was out hiking with a friend and we smelled this unusual odor while we were hiking and she said, oh wow, I think I smell a skunk. And I said, nope, that's not a skunk. Do you know what that smell is? Yeah, it's a red fox. And they have scent glands that they release every time they go to the bathroom and they mark their territory with that real stinky skunk smell. So I brought a mount with me so I could show it to you. And I've been excited because there's snowfall and we can look at the tracks in the snow because I want you to know how to identify them too. So this is Red Fox, it's native to America. Actually back in the, uh, when the early settlers were here, it was not really very frequent on the East Coast. And so with the habitation, with humans changing and adapting the environment, this animal has become very adaptable to our suburban environments. Because as you know, they like to come into your yard and eat your cat food and maybe your bird seed. So sometimes they can become a nuisance pest. But here it is, little red fox. So what are the common characteristics for identifying? Lightweight bodies, lighter weight body than your dog would have. Very dense fur, usually gorgeous red. This mount is an old one from the park and it's at least 25 years old, so it's faded a lot. But usually the dense fur is usually reddish color and that's why the animal's called a red fox. They have a very narrow stout uh, muzzle, which much more narrow usually than a typical dog. And they have uh, very astute ears, which we'll talk about in a minute. Their nose is not any better than your dog's nose, really, for the most part. It's really these ears that make them pretty uh, adaptable. adaptable. And then at night, if you were to see these eyes with a flashlight, they're red. Whereas my dog tends to be yellow eyes during the nighttime. But usually the breast is whitish. Usually the back legs are covered with red. And the name fox refers to an old, from an old English term that refers to its really bushy tail. It's raining out here now, so this bushy tail's not quite so bushy as it typically would be. So there's the stride. It's about 18 inch stride in the step of the animal. So this is historically an animal that really wasn't at the east, in the East Coast during colonization. They say it came in afterwards and it is the world's most widely distributed carnivore. Wow, interesting fact there. So come on, let's take a look at these uh, tracks because what you're gonna notice is they're very purposeful. When, when you see a red fox trotting along, he's usually got a purpose. And here's his stride. I tossed a ruler down there for you to look at. So there's the steps, usually a little bit longer than your stride. And see how straight they are? Uh, usually your dog is not making a stride that's quite so perfectly straight. Typically the red fox is in a trotting position. So what's he been doing? Let's look in here. You can guess what he's been doing. He's been mousing and looking for little baby birds. Here's his track along here. So what are they doing at this time of the year? At this time of the year, they've paired up. They believe they might mate for life. They're not fully sure, but they made up January, February, March, they're mating. So oftentimes I'll see them in pairs when I find them uh, trotting through the park here. But this guy happens to be alone. And so they mate and then they dig. I often find two or three different holes where they've dug in and they'll have their babies. I got a pretty nice camera one time and I used to film the little baby, the little kits when they are birthed. It's usually uh, three or four of them per den. So look at it coming here. What's he doing? He's looking inside of these shrubs and things. He's looking for little birds trying to find himself a little bunny. That's commonly what they're gonna eat. And if you find their scat on the trail, their scat often has hair in it. You can tell it's kind of tapered at the ends because he's been eating a lot of bunny rabbits. So the hair and the scat's a pretty good giveaway. And then the scent that they leave, you sniff it. When he trots past the trail and you see him and you smell that skunk smell, you'll know it's him. It's different from a skunk. A skunk uses his scent for, uh, for uh, defensive purposes, to keep you away. <laughs> Whereas this guy's just using it for territorial purposes. So another thing that you'll find with them is they squeal in the spring months when they're out. I think sometimes when they've left their mommies, they left, they've gone and they squeal like a screaming woman, like, yow, yow. well, not quite like that, but somewhat like that. And it, it's a squealing sound. So you'll hear them and you'll wonder what it is. You'll think there's a person in the woods. But anyway, there it is, the cute little red fox. He's running up and down the trails and it's a fun thing to track, especially when there's new fresh snow on the ground. So there you go, Master Gardeners.